Hi everyone, welcome to another installment of Q&A with Corrine. And <clears throat> this week's question is from Tyler, who lives in Casper, Wyoming. And so his question is in multiple parts. So I'm gonna read part of it and then, and then um, answer or comment on it and read another part of it. And it's, it's longer, but it's really actually um, very useful in terms of outlining a few of the pitfalls um, that we run into when we go down the permaculture path. Um, so here goes. So Tyler writes, I've been attempting permaculture for the last few years with more failures than wins, but that's okay. It's all part of the learning process. My first big failure was when I started learning about permaculture and I got excited and put the cart before the horse and ordered a bunch of plants before I got my foundation established. I lost nearly everything. Since then, I've been focusing on getting loads of mulch dropped off and letting it compost down a season, then spreading it where I intend to plant, first putting a layer of leaves down. My other big struggle is I tend to load up my plate with all of my ideas and ambitions for the summer and then end up stretched thin and not putting enough quality time into any one project. Mainly missing out on watering, hoping the mulch will magically provide all of the water. Yes, it would be so nice if the mulch magically provided all of the water. Um, don't we wish? So that first part of what Tyler um, shared is super useful because it is so common. Um, I think people go down the permaculture path, they get super excited, but without a site plan in place, they start putting things in, in in a sort of a haphazard way. And not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but if you're looking to save time, to save energy, um, to save money, I highly, highly recommend that you come up with a site plan first. Um, I do have a video that I'm going to post below that I released not that long ago about the top three questions that you should ask yourself when designing a homestead. So definitely check that out. But I just highly recommend with clients and when I start working with clients that they come up with a site plan on paper. Um, that's what my Resilient Homestead program is about. Um, and that's what I feel like brings people the most success. Um, and the reason for that is when you have an idea of what your goals are for your site and you have a site plan on paper of where your garden's going to go, where your food forest is going to go, what species you're going to put in your food forest, where the chicken coop is going to go, etc. Right? Then you come up with a timeline for implementation from that site plan so that you know what you're going to be doing every season rather than feeling like Tyler stretched thin or you take on five different projects because you want them done right you take on one or two projects per season you get those systems in place before taking on other things so that's kind of I, I share that experience with Tyler because he's not the only one that's been through it right we all get enthusiastic about things but I do highly recommend that people get a site plan on down on paper and a timeline for implementation that might be three years that might be five years and that way you're doing things very strate strategically and not only that you can kind of set your mind at ease that oh my gosh when am I going to put in the chicken coop well that's not going to happen until summer 2025 because I have that on my timeline for implementation so it really helps kind of calm the nerves in terms of understanding when your whole plan is going to be in place so that's the first part of, of Tyler's question. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Tyler. Uh, in terms of his other Q&A, um, this fall, he, he writes, I'm attempting to do deep leaf piles in all current and future planting areas, roughly 12 to 24 inches in depth. Do you have any experience with deep leaf mulching and do you have any advice which might help it be successful? So Tyler, I don't have experience with deep leaf mulching, but from my experience with composting and just general principles around soil building and composting, I will say that you want to make sure um, that those 12 to 24 inches of depth for your um, leaf uh, piles have are well and properly aerated. So what I would recommend is either chipping or shredding that leaf material before putting it down because um, what you don't want is for the leaves to be matted down because what happens when the leaves are matted down, I'm sure you've seen this before, when leaves fall and then 
the, there's moisture on them and then more fall and they get all matted down is that creates an anaerobic um, environment, um, which is not ideal. Not only that, but if it's deep enough and it's matted down enough, then it actually prevents moisture from getting down to the soil below. So that's not what you want. Um, so those would be some of my re recommendations is just that make sure that that pile is well aerated so that moisture can go below ground and it's, um, it's breaking down as an aerobic process. So that's Tyler's first question. His second one is the next big project, which I intend to do this coming summer, is to divert all my grain water from the showers and the washer into swales filled with mulch. Have you studied this at all? And do you have any suggestions or ideas to help it be successful? Yes, um, this is what I do with my washing machine water, is that I divert it into a mulch swale and it works out great. It never smells. Um, and um, it's a fairly simple process. Um, I had, I worked with a plumber who made a valve where I could switch it um, from my septic system out into this pipe that goes into a swale. Um, so during the winter time, you do wanna switch it back to the septic, right? Because it's just not gonna work for us being in cold climates in the winter um, to have gray water running outside. Um, but for spring, summer, fall, you can certainly use it. So just keep it as simple as you can. I run a pipe out of the house along the side of the house and then down underneath um, underneath the ground into the swale. And I did do a video of this several years back and I'll include that below. So you definitely wanna check out that video um, just to see um, my system. Um, but I would say keep it simple. And again, with gray water, you never wanna use gray water um, for annual gardens. Um, but yes, planting, I have plant service berries along that swale. So planting some woody perennials or some fruit trees that can take advantage of that water is a great idea. Um, so let me know um, if you have any questions, follow-up questions, Tyler or anyone else. Um, thank you so much for watching. And again, send me additional questions if you'd like. Thanks. I'll see you next week.